So from what we've learned so far in the book of Acts, what does it mean to be full of the Holy Spirit? It means allowing the Holy Spirit to be in control of our thoughts, our actions and our minds and allowing God to be at the centre of what we do. God's work can't be done on our own strength. So we have to allow him to be in our minds, in our hearts and in our actions. And that he helps us to do things that might seem impossible, whether it's being kind to people who don't like us, or maybe it's being bold to tell people about the goodness of Jesus. Stephen, who we started to learn about last week, was full of the Holy Spirit and God was using him to do amazing things. But we know that this made some people angry. They didn't like what he was saying because they didn't believe that Jesus was who he said he was. They didn't believe that Jesus was the son of God. So they tried to trick him by asking him really complicated questions and arguing with him. But Stephen didn't argue back. He had the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So here's what Stephen said. After they'd communicated, after they'd had conversations and arguments, the Bible tells us that they were not able to resist the intelligence and the wisdom and the inspiration of the Spirit by which and by whom Stephen spoke. So since these men had lost their argument by trying to um, overcome him with their, their wisdom or their intelligence, they decided that they would have to come up with some lies about him instead just like people did when Jesus was about to be crucified, before he was crucified. So Stephen is brought before the council or the Sanhedrin and the high priest asks if the things that Stephen is accused of are true. Stephen decides to give them a history lesson, reminding them of what's gone on in the past. He reminds them that throughout the history of the Jews, they have rejected God's servants. He starts with Abraham and God's call to him and the promise of his descendants. Then Stephen tells of how Joseph and his, his brothers were jealous of him. But God still used Joseph to rescue Egypt and his family from famine. Stephen then goes on to talk about Moses and how God used Moses to lead the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and into the promised land that God had promised for Abraham. Stephen brings the history of the Jews' rejection of God's servants into the present day. Do you think it was easy for, Jesus, for Stephen to speak of Jesus this way and to tell the truth of what he knew? Sometimes it's hard to speak the truth. As the religious leaders heard Stephen, they were guilty of sin. Stephen sees their angry faces, but he did not allow the fear that might have been in him to take control. He continued to point the people to Jesus, who was the Son of God. Even though the, the words that Stephen was speaking was true, these people did not want to believe him. And so they were very angry. They rushed towards Stephen, grabbed him and dragged him out of the city. They were so angry with Stephen and with God's message, they began to throw rocks at him. And even as Stephen was suffering, he still was filled with the Holy Spirit. And because of this, the Bible tells us he said, he asked, the, he asked God to forgive the people for they didn't know what they were doing, just as Jesus had said when he was on the cross. Let's watch the video to learn more about the story. <laughs> 